Well, hello again from Kingston. We're approaching some of the final phases of some of the work on the crossing. The labour force is probably at its highest level, some 80 people, and some key phases are beginning. So let's go and have a look. It's time to meet a company newly arrived on the project. Black and MacDonald, with a history of over a century's work, employ more than 5,000 people across North America, and they've been busy installing temporary light poles and other features at the new intersection. They've been working with or alongside Tomlinson, who hold the major contract for the construction of the roadway and ramp. Work on the rock infill for the ramp leading up to Highway 15 is well advanced. But there does seem to be some concern about what will happen to the library sign, which generated active discussion during the week. Tomlinson employed a hydro excavator during the week, and their excavator was also busy in the corner of the library car park. As the week drew to a close, Black and MacDonald, as well as Hybrid, another local company, were very evident on the intersection. Trucks from Mulrooney Trucking are very frequent visitors to the site and they've been engaged in the project from the outset. As many as 41 trucks a day are engaged in moving gravel, either from the causeway or to the ramp. Preparation of the base for this roadway is undertaken by a combination of a roller compactor and a bulldozer who work in relays and uh, it's already very evident that much of the, the base work has been completed. Another frequent visitor to the site is a bowser carrying diesel fuel. None of these machines run on air. On the other side of the crossing there's quite a bit of traffic from CBM, the concrete delivery company. After their run down the 401 these turn on to Montreal Street before they make their way down the causeway. This week, they were once again supplying maple concrete pumping as Pier 6 team received the delivery of concrete for the pier cap. While we're on the subject of concrete, it would be a failure on my part if I failed to mention how much extraordinary and intensive effort is going into preparation of the roadway at the West End. There's an extraordinary amount of work involved, but we have reached the stage where rebar is being laid on top of the existing deck slabs to allow concrete to be poured using the Gomaco machine. When we're talking about concrete, we can't possibly ignore the subject of the concrete girders. Three more arrived on Monday and two on Wednesday. Installed on Tuesday and Thursday respectively. Tuesday's installation was a particularly damp affair in torrential rain. And there's a separate video on that. But let's have a look at some of the highlights. After a very damp experience on Tuesday, Thursday's lift was a breeze.
Once the trucks and cranes were in position, it was just a matter of the crane operators demonstrating their expertise in placing the hooks. The next scene is for Mark Milley, who commented that he hadn't seen the girders lifted off the trucks. The lift into position has become familiar, and by the time it's complete, we're ready to prepare the dolly for departure. Thursday's next lift, girder number 65, for those who are counting, completed the section between piers 14 and 15. Nearby, as we become accustomed to seeing, excavation of the gravel between the piers is continuing. This is essential because it cannot be removed once the girders are placed. The supporting piers that remain to be completed are receiving steady attention. Pier 12, seen here, was having concrete forms removed this week and the top cleaned and prepared for installations. The pumping of concrete which we saw earlier on Pier 16 could only take place after substantial amounts of rebar had been placed. But at this stage, many of you are probably wondering, what about the steel structure? Well, here's the situation as we went into the weekend you should be able to see that just one section of four steel beams remains to fill the gap. Two of those four beams are already here and they await installation. The first of these arrived in Kingston on Monday. The second of the last four beams arrived on Thursday and it was carried by Active Transport, another Grant Group company specialising in particularly long and oversized loads. And you can see, looking at its length, why a rear steer dolly was required. It will surprise no one to hear that turning this beam around the Highway 15 Gore Road intersection required careful traffic management and some very skillful handling of the rear dolly which in the case of this particular trailer is manually operated. This shot of the combination heading down to the site gives a pretty good idea of the scale of the piece. But we shouldn't allow these latest arrivals to steal the thunder of the work done by the iron workers this week. Pun intended. In a very busy day on Monday, they added another two steel sections to fill the gap that had existed between the steel structures. Not long after the third beam had been placed, the fourth was already on its way, quickly in the air, and was 
positioned as perfectly as the other three. A few adjustments to the flanges that join the beams and the unit was up in the air. As it has been throughout the process, the safe, skilled handling of the iron workers is very much in evidence. And before very long, as has always been the case, struts and braces, and other reinforcing pieces, were in the air very quickly. In other work this week, the iron workers installed the fingers that project from the south side of the bridge and will support the western lookout. So there's no question, next week is going to be an important one for the project. It's already been confirmed that the lift pad um, is stable for the crane to lift the final beams and iron workers have been busy preparing and making modifications or, or installing minor accessories on the beams that are to be lifted. We'll close, as we often do, with a few wildlife scenes from the river. Geese and goslings of different generations can be seen on the river all the time. Well, there you have it. That's another week under our belts. And if you want to be sure of catching future updates, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.